I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. We now know Mike Tomlin is definitely staying with the Pittsburgh Steelers at least next year, and there's a lot more to glean off that. I'll talk about that, what T.J. Watt and Cam Hayward said about Mike Tomlin, and get into things that the Steelers do need to change moving forward that aren't revolving around removing their head coach. We'll get into all that and more. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 or more infections Get yours today at jacemedical.com and use code Locked On to get $20 off your order. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that Mike Tomlin will be sticking with the Pittsburgh Steelers. This, of course, uh, was reported originally by Mike Garofalo, who said that basically Mike Tomlin, who did have a team meeting, we were at the facility when it happened. We weren't privy to be in on the team meeting, but Mike Tomlin informed the Pittsburgh Steelers players that it, the rumors about him wanting to leave are unfounded and that there that, that there's no chance that's happening and he's definitely going to be on uh next year that, that that report was also confirmed by multiple reporters and we now know Mike Tomlin's going to be back next year we can put that rumor to bed it's done but if you remember I told you it was a likelihood that that wasn't that rumor was not going to do anything in the first place and that he probably was going to come, come back. It's also why I didn't even entertain those rumors during the final couple weeks of the season when people were starting to prop them up and people were asking, Chris, why don't you talk about it? The reason was is I didn't think it was real. And we see now it wasn't. Um, so that that being said, the Steelers aren't getting rid of him. And really anybody who knew anything knew that that was probably going to be the case. Every indication from the from from the team. Now, maybe when they were seven seven, there were certainly questions. But the way they responded at the end of the season, that was no that that, that those questions were all dispelled. Mike Tomlin was going to, is going to be sticking around. In fact, the only way Tomlin wouldn't coach the Steelers next year is if he decided not to. And like I told you, there's no real indication that he would ever do that. That he would consider quitting. This guy lives, eats, breathes breathe sleeps football he's about the Steelers the games the practices the scouting the draft the development he's only 51 years old he's well he's, he's in his prime for, for for coaching and for developing and in fact if you want more information this is probably further insight into what's going to be happening in the, in the next in the next month or so Jerry Dulac my colleague at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette and maybe the longest tenured Steelers beat writer uh on on the beat tweeted out there was a reason when you know in in response to uh, why, when someone asked, why did Mike Tomlin storm off when he was asked about his contract? Now, he didn't tell me the reason, and I don't know what that reason is. But putting two and two together, if we know that Mike Tomlin's coming back next year, and there's a reason that he stormed off when he was asked about the contract, I bet it's because he, it's already a foregone conclusion that the that the extension's going to get done in due time. Probably sometime you know, if I remember correctly, when I la I wrote about his last extension, I think it happened maybe like after the Senior Bowl, like right before the combine, like sometime in in, in that in that in that uh, part of there. So, Mike Tomlin's sticking around, and I know there's probably some out there that are saying, "Oh, like Mike Tomlin's message, it falls on deaf ears." And there's some people out there that really believe that they really believe that, um, and they and they think that the players who are impacted by his coaching don't don't listen to, to him at all. Well, let's actually listen to some of those players, including the guy who all Steelers fans believe should be the defensive player of the year uh, and tell and in TJ Watt and listen to how he tells you when he negotiated his contract a couple years back, part of what helped him negotiate the contract and made him want to negotiate his contract was knowing that Mike Tomlin would stay with the Steelers long-term. And that was part of why he signed it. Here's TJ Watt from the Steelers locker room Tuesday. Any change in the way Mike T goes about his job this year versus the other your previous six? No. Cam did give a very impassioned defense of Mike and, and you know about his future. Obviously, I'm guessing you feel the same way and would love to. Yeah, I want to play for Mike T. It was huge in my contract talks. Is I don't want to play for anybody other than Mike T. 
Um, I, you guys understand and see in the way that I talk about how much I respect and appreciate him as a coach, as a man, as a leader. And um, that's my endorsement for him. That is Trent Jordan Watt telling you that Tomlin is the coach that he wants and nobody else. And to add that, you heard them. Ref you heard that the reference to Cam Hayward saying his impassioned statements about Mike Tomlin. He added on uh, too with his thoughts of, of Tomlin being c continuously questioned on his future with the Steelers. Here's Cam Hayward, same day. Have you that some of the chatter around that's not coming from this room but outside of Mike T's that he might be burned out. Do you see anything different in him than you saw from the day you walked in 13 years ago? I'll just say this about Mike T. Like, why are we so concerned with somebody who has a year on their contract, has been locked in, and has wanted to just play, like, coach football? We don't ask anybody else if they need to come back for another year or if anything else. I just think it's doing him a disservice. This guy's been locked in from the very get go, but yet we're worried about if he's coming back or not. Um, and he's been locked in, and I appreciate it because that's only created more dissension for players and coaches, we just want to focus on one goal. He wants to focus on one goal. And I just think that's fair to, you know, I think, you know, everybody likes to talk about, oh, he might take a year off, he might do this, he's only got one year. I just think, why would he answer a question like that? He's worried about trying to win a playoff game. And then last night, you know, we just lost a big playoff game. Why does he need to address that now? That's not the time or the place. And I appreciate the question, but I just think for him in general, um, you know, Coach T's earned that to just, you know, be single, singly focused on one goal. And, you know, we've asked this question week in and week out. It's just not fair to the process. Cam, but I understand that. That wasn't what I was asking. I was yeah. asking people are outside of us. I, I know, I know. Saying, I'm, I'm not I'm trying just to. saying, do you see, do you see, have you seen any change in his approach to no, his job this year versus no. the other, the other oh, 12? That's yeah. what I'm asking. You know, I think, um, I just think the consistency with them, um, you know, when all this other stuff has been brought up, I think um, with Coach T, it's a consistency that um, he doesn't have to change up how he's going to act because of what else is going on. I think it's allowed him to just really stay narrow, narrowly focused and focus on us. So all that said, Cam, you have no doubt he's the coach here next season? My goal is he's going to my, – my, not my goal, but my thought is he's going to be the coach here. Um, and, um, you know, if anybody's – thinking it should be anybody else man you're asking <laughs> you're asking for a whole lot more than just that uh my t is you know wants to be a picture of stealer is a pittsburgh stealer like why would anybody ask for anything else oh uh that sounds a lot like guys who want to play for mike tomlin and that that's not a message falling on deaf ears right there uh you know, are there problems? Absolutely. And we'll talk about some of those. We'll fix about how to fix those in the next segments. Uh, but, um, you know, like, again, this is what I've been telling y'all that Tomlin ain't the problem that he's made out to be in, or thing that the big thing that's holding the Steelers back in, in these games. I mean, and another thing I think this was brought up to be my Bar Mark Caboli, who writes for the athletic. We've had him on this show. Um, he brought this up to me in the locker room and he brought this up again on Twitter. And you can you can check him out. Check him out. He left this on Twitter uh, just yesterday. Um you know, he said, uh, he said, quote, and by the way, Mark Caboli, who's been covering the team since the Bill Cowher years, he said, quote, I never heard a player say a bad word about Mike Tomlin. Nobody. I understand playoff utility and stuff of that nature, but you would think that one person would say something negative about, at him, about, about him at some point. And no, it's not because he's their quote unquote friend. It's just an interesting dynamic to me. And Mark's point is, again, he's right. When you hear there might be people that come out and say that they didn't like the Steelers as an organization, they might not like a player on the Steelers, but there's no one that's come out ever in the in the 17 years that Mike Tomlin's been a head coach and said, man, that guy do doesn't get us prepared. That guy does not care. That guy does not fight. That guy does not give, give, give us a chance to win. And you'd think that if this was an actual problem, if, if he was this actual cancer that he's made out to be, that that would be the case. That somebody and someone even significant, but there's not even anybody. Who, who, who you can go to for, for that because that doesn't that, that person has never come out publicly and said anything if there's anyone that even wants to say anything again there are problems and they and you got to fix them but just firing Tomlin in fact probably invites a lot more problems and doesn't solve the problems that that I think this team needs to fix.
And as a test for this, I, I was really funny. Those two videos that I just played for you from Watt and Hayward, I put both of those out on my on my Twitter just to see how people would respond, especially Steelers fans. And most Steelers fans understood it, and they said, "Hey, even if they if I was a person who thought that Tomlin maybe should be gone, I, you know what? If those two guys were undeniably great Steelers, back him. Who am I to say that I know better than them? Cam Hayward and T.J. Watt. And most and most Steelers fans were also like, "I agree with them. I'm on that side." But there's that loud vocal minority who some people out there had the audacity to go and say that Hayward and TJ Watt, TJ Watt and Cam Hayward don't know what they're talking about. And even went as far as to say, you know what, they could leave with Tomlin too, and that would be even better. Ladies and gentlemen, if somebody is questioning the integrity of those Pittsburgh Steelers, that is an easy way to see who was unhinged, diluted by unhealthy biases, and not worth your time in the discussion on that topic. Mike Tomlin staying, and the players the Steelers want and need to build around are all for him staying. That's the bottom line. And I don't think it needs to be that much bigger than what it is because it's just the truth. And like I said before, things do need to change. The offense has to get better. And that starts with finding an offensive coordinator, and not just an offensive coordinator that's – going to call good plays, but an offensive coordinator that can be part of helping foster more of those positive culture, cultural points in the offense. We'll talk about who some of those candidates are on the next after this next break here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. Stick with us. I'm Chris Carter. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let those things out, especially to someone who's an unbiased person in, in your life, like a good therapist. So today, I want to say how I really feel about something. And you might even be thinking the same thing this week. Maybe not, because you're not in my position. But personally, I know that over the next four or five months, however long it is until, until the next time the Steelers take training camp, I'm about to get asked whether Kenny, whether Kenny Pickett or Mason Rudolph should start for the Steelers at quarterback next season, 650 million times. If you want to know why I picked that number, it's because that's how many times ketchup bottles get made in a single year. And I know you're about to ask me that many times. And knowing that sounds daunting. And part of me kind of thinks I'd rather just get pancake blocked by Broderick Jones. But knowing that I can get a good therapist with better help therapy online helps me know that I have better ways to deal with my problems. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team, and it's important to get those things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on, and you'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. We're also brought to you by PrizeFix, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, and picking whole lineups that you have to contest with other people, you're not doing that. With Prize Picks, you're just playing Prize Picks. You're just playing the projections. You pick two to six players you think you have a, a good beat on for their day in fantasy, and you and you look at their projections, and you say, okay, they're projected for this number. All you got to do is say more or less, and if you're right, you win on Prize Picks. It's that simple, it's that fun, and that easy, and that's why everyone needs to start playing Prize Picks, the fun new daily fantasy game that everyone needs to get on. And right now, they have a specials league with the rest of the NFL playoffs. You can you can include not just football players, but NBA players in the same in the same guesses, where you can combine players like LeBron James and Travis Kelsey for a combined uh, three pointers made in receptions, and say if it's the number's ten and a half, if you say more or less, you can watch your winnings roll in if you're correct by going with prize picks and prize picks offers a reboot policy where your entries stay in place. Even if one of your players gets injured for, for all NFL games. So if a player is hurt in the first half, doesn't come back in the second, that player is rebooted. That's the prize picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. Prize picks offers weekly promotions. Take advantage of them by going to prizepickscom slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepickscom slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars back here in the locked on Steelers podcast I'm your host Chris Carter here 
let's talk about some of the things that do need to change. And I think that there's that there's like there's a key element to this team that needed to be sharper throughout this year. And it's clearly the offense. The defense does need to get better at some points. And I want to get to that in the third segment. I think that there's like some key elements to the defense that they can get there. But you know the defense has a core there that you can believe in, that you can work with. The offense has players, but I'm not sure the offense has yet to develop a core. When I say a core, a core is a group of guys where you know there are bona fide leaders who everyone gets behind. And then there's the bona fide role players who are like, hey, I'm going to set the example for everyone else, but I'm also going to point to the guy who's the clear leader of the unit. For example, on defense, clearly leaders, Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, those guys are up front. Role players who do who point who are great examples who point to those leaders. Alex Highsmith, another example. In fact, Minka Fitzpatrick, one of those leaders as well. Um, you know, and I I'd even argue to say that a guy like Joey Porter Jr. in just his rookie season became one of those role players who could point to say, hey, let's get behind the, the leaders over there. And there's a structure there, there's leadership there. That's what I think is really missing on the offensive side of the ball. On top of they need an offensive coordinator, and we'll get to that in just a little bit here, but they need a, a they need a group that can that knows who who kind of calls the shots, who runs everything, and how how things would build build forward, uh, and how you know who kind of can set the tone for the offense and who can kind of be looked up to there. And let's face it, this group didn't have that this season. And in fact, if you remember, we talked about how Najee Harrison kind of miffed uh, early in the season when he wasn't voted to be a team captain after he was a team captain the year before, um, and it was just Kenny Pickett who was voted to be team captain. Um, and you know, he kind of took it in stride. You know, he never officially complained about it, he kind of like acknowledged it and he was kind of like meh. But um, you know, but that's a guy who, you know, was a leader for the Steelers and I think still ended up being a leader for the Steelers. But it's different when, you know, I think there's a, a maybe not a power struggle, but there's a voice struggle as far as who is the leading voice of the offense. Typically, you want it to be your quarterback because the quarterback is the guy with the his ball, the ball in his hands the most. He's the guy that conducts the offense. He's the, the person who the plays have to run through all the time and has to communicate. Um, but sometimes it can't be that. You know, you go back to Ben Roethlisberger's uh, first year; he won a Super Bowl. Jerome Bettis was the leader of that offense. Heinz Ward was a leader on that offense. But you know, Ben Roethlisberger he was the quarterback, but he was the guy that kind of learned from everybody else, and he was kind of he was kind of taking that. And it was it wasn't until his second Super Bowl season when you started to see my uh Bill Ben Roethlisberger step out of his shell a bit more as a leader and be like hey let's step up let's get let's we, we got to step up for our defense because they've been carrying us all these years and uh, if you remember the Ravens game early on that season where they had a big comeback um you know he he did a, a similar thing like that um, and I think that's what need that's what's needed in this offensive group is that they need bona fide leaders who are vocal leaders who set the tone for everyone else to fall in line along with the role-playing leaders who can do that now I, I think Najee Harris can be one of those uh, one of those uh, leaders that that we're talking about, I think Jalen Warren could be one of those guys that points to the leaders and 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 is is on that is on that track. I think Pat Fryermuth is one of those guys to be a role player, but I think that they need another bona fide leader, and and it needs to come from the quarterback room. I don't know if it will. Uh, with their current status of, you know, Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky are the only two quarterbacks under contract going into next year. And Mason Rudolph is scheduled to hit free agency. Will he will he be signed in free agency to come back? Will they let go of Mitch Trubisky? And will they add another quarterback somewhere, somehow? Those are all big questions, but you need leadership. But, uh, but when it comes to the leaders also, you need that coordinator that can help kind of facilitate that leadership, that can kind of help, you know, you know, faci- you know get that culture rolling, uh, you know, away from when just when everyone is, uh, you know, has their eyes, eyes glued to the defense. Well, I mean, everyone like Mike Tama, when the whole staff is, you know, focusing on, you know, getting ready for a game, uh, you know, the, the offense can kind of run itself. And I, I think it's going to take someone going outside the organization. And I don't think, I don't anticipate the Steelers to stick with, like, to think like, oh, well, we finished stronger with our offense. So we'll stick with Eddie Faulkner and Mike Sullivan, you know, you know, running the offense and calling the plays. Um, I think what you're going to see is maybe like one or two guys stick around in the offensive staff, but you're going to see a new offensive coordinator come into town. And I think what's a big sign of that is uh, the Steelers have already lost Glenn Thomas, who was an offensive assistant brought in to help, Uh, Matt Canada at the start of the season. He's already going to Nebraska as a quarterback's coach. So with that being said, um, I I think there's going to be some shakeups on the offensive side of the ball. And that's where the change needs needs to truly come is that they need uh, an offensive coach. And we've talked about multiple candidates on this, on this show, Eric B Kellen Moore, uh, uh, Brian Schottenheimer, plenty of guys who could be out of work uh, or are out of work. 
um, and could be assets to this offense to build it in the right direction. Those are the, the, you know, they need, they need someone to hire to bring in uh, soon uh, to set the tone for the offense and then get to work on what they want to be. And, and, you know, we talked about how, what they wanted their identity to be, what they wanted, they, what the, how they wanted to hit the ground running. They didn't get running as an offense until the last three weeks of the season. You can't, you know, do that again next season. It has to be different. And you need an experienced guy who knows how to work NFL rooms, who knows how to call NFL offenses and knows how to, how to, how to work with, how to balance also the NFL, uh, you know, not attitudes, but, you know, pr- characters that, that, that come with it, because that's the other part of this is that Mike Tomlin, I think one of his best traits as a coach is that he knows how to talk to guys. He knows how to get through to them. Um, and sometimes it's not about, you know, getting in their face. It's about challenging them, leaving them space to go meet that challenge. And if they don't, reminding them of what that challenge is. And then if they if they don't meet it, then you know that that, that guy wasn't up for it. Um, but I, I think they need another coach like that on the offensive side of the ball who can also be a kind of guy who who want, who says like, hey, I'm going to push you in, in, in this way and I'm going to be, you know, help be, be trying to get more better, better out of you as a player than uh, – instead of just calling a play. And again, I think that's where Matt Canada struggled the most. It wasn't necessarily calling the plays. It was the organization of the offense. And, uh, and uh, when you don't, when you're not organized as an offense, it's going to be tough for you to hold anyone accountable for mistakes when, when you're, when you're kind of all over the place. And I think that that's where, um, that's where the offense needs to get better. That's where the offense, the next offensive coordinator needs to be better for the Steelers. And I think that's, that's going to be a big part of what this off season is, is you need to find an offensive coordinator. You need to find other offensive leaders and you need the quarterback to be in the mix there for at least as a guy that you can be reliable with moving forward. We'll get to more on the offense as the, as the, as the off season rolls along, but I want to talk a little bit of defense because Cam Hayward opened up some interesting things about himself and the question of him being, being back next year. We'll talk about that here more on the Lockdown Steelers Pocket Podcast. Stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by Jace Medical. Jace Medical brings you what's called the Jace Case, which brings you five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get a Jace Case is to fill out a simple online form, and in some cases, jump on a quick call with, with the board-certified physicians of Jace Medical, and you get ongoing care from their physicians on any treatment-related questions. Doctor created, doctor recommended. Don't be caught unprepared. Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for major weather events, or limited by yet another supply shortage, Jace Medical's got you covered. Thanks to their partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics, and a long list of daily medications can be delivered in a one-year supply, even ED generics like Cialis and Viagra. Jace handles everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Jace Medical is simple. You go online, fill out a form, and then you get prescription life-saving medications delivered right to your door. Jace Case gives you peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you had access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code LOCKEDON at checkout for a discount as well. If you are someone you love, would get peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily medication go to jacemedical.com if to see if it's offered for you remember to use promo code locked on for twenty dollars off your purchase at jacemedical.com Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our discussion here on the Pittsburgh Steelers. One thing I didn't clip up the video of, but Cam Hayward did acknowledge, was he talked about his injury situation this year. It wasn't just the injury that we saw at the beginning of the season. Um, and, uh, it, you know, because he remember he, more, he, he tore his groin and that kind of kicked him off the field and he was out for basically half the year. But Cam Hayward, you know, acknowledged that like, oh, no, that was also a lingering problem that came from training camp. He said he suffered it in training camp, took days off in training camp. They thought that they had rehabbed it properly. And then he said he just tore right through it with the, with a freak accident play at the beginning of the season. And that led to him, how he kind of was the rest of the season. And we talked about it in the show, like there were games where you could tell Cam Hayward was often in the right place. And that was really helping the Steelers, but he was never wrecking games anymore. And that's who Cam Hayward had been even last year uh, was a guy who could wreck games for you, a guy who could be a difference maker. And uh, like, you know, in a game like where they needed him to, to help out with the playoff game uh, against the bills, he just, he wasn't a wrecker. You know, he was a, he was a, a decent role player this year in the 11 starts that he gave, that he, uh, that, that he gave the Steelers. But like, you know, uh, you know, last, last year he was, you know, a much better player like this year. 
Uh, he didn't, I think he recorded one, uh, two sacks on the entire season. Uh, that, that's not Cam Hayward like when you think back to his, his career and how, and how he's played um, as a, as the great Pittsburgh Steeler that he's been heck just, just last year, he had 10 and a half sacks the year before that he had 10 sacks. So for him to have two sacks, clearly something was wrong there. Um, so he'll be 35 next season. And you wonder if he can kind of keep it up uh, or, or get back to the level that he was at uh, the year before that. And that could be a big boost, but I think that that opens up another part of the discussion that needs to happen with the Steelers right now on defense is that this is a, a team that's supposed to be, really tough up front and they were i think in a lot of times this year but they weren't as dominant as they had been in recent seasons and um you know you look at the defensive line and you like what keanu benton did um this in his rookie year i think you can look at larry Ogunjobi and say that hey he was a he was a good starter but he didn't destroy games either um and you know cam hayward with his with his hindrance from his injuries I think defensive line and finding a, a, a star defensive lineman is a much bigger concern than we thought it might be going into this season because we know we all knew Cam Hayward was going to probably retire with the next few years. And Cam Hayward said he doesn't want to retire. He said, if you know, he's he's just he needs to do his rehab. So he's 100 percent going into the next training camp and he wants to be back next next season. Um, but uh, but, you know, you look at you look at the Cam Hayward and his time time with the Steelers. Um, and, and I think you've seen a guy who's battled through injuries before, uh, never ones that took him out. Well, 2016, actually, he had an injury that kept him out for quite some time. Um, but, uh, but this is a guy he's, he's rarely been hurt for the Steelers. And in fact, in the two years before this year, he didn't miss a single game. Um, and I think that that speaks to his readiness. I think that Cam Hayward can get back to being a productive guy, maybe not a 10 sack defensive tackle type of player. Maybe he gets back to being seven to eight sacks and that still would be huge for what the Steelers need. Um, but you need more help around him in the defensive line. And I think that that's, that needs to be something not just, and not just getting after the quarterback, but actual run stuffers. I think Keanu Benton showed a lot of progress and we'll get to, we'll get to talking about him when we start doing our season ending grades, as far as how everyone graded out. Uh, for the whole season and where they stand going into next season. Um, but I think that Larry Ogunjobi, he, he's fine, but I think you need another guy there. And I wouldn't even put it past the Steelers to consider looking at that in the first round uh, if it's available. There are some there are some really good defensive linemen in this draft class. I'm still going to kind of building up uh, just like my early portions of my research to see who I want to focus on as we start to build our big, big board here uh, for the Lockdown Steelers podcast. But bottom line is the Steelers are going to need help at defensive line. Um, I think they're good at edge rusher. Um, I think that they, if they can get back Quan Alexander, Cole Holcomb, and, and Landon Roberts as a trio, I think you could try to run it back with them, maybe draft another young linebacker to be the fourth option there that you can develop with them in case you face another injury situation where all three of them are hurt at some point. Um, but I think that's fine there. I think you could use some more help with safety and some more help with corner, but defensive line, if you can get the Steelers defensive line being back to a, not just being a good unit, a dominant unit that could change the tone of a lot of games. You can, you can do a lot better with gap integrity. You can get a lot, get after the quarterback a lot better. Those are all the things that I think could work in their favor. If that, if that happens and with Cam Hayward, if as long as he returns, like he feels like he will, I think it's a very good sign that, you know, they'll at least have that piece. Keanu Benton, Ogan Joby is a piece that you have there. They, I really think a, the draft could be a major resource to help get another player who could be disruptive on the defensive line. We'll talk about more here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, I'm, I'm, I got to run over to the Peterson Events Center because this is Tuesday when I'm recording this. and I got to get to cover uh, Pitt versus Syracuse there. So read my work at Pitt at the post at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette at post-gazette.com there. Find me here on the Locked On Steelers podcast every Monday through Friday talking about your Pittsburgh Steelers on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube. Thanks again for everyone enjoying us. We're back tomorrow with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers here on the Locked On. Steelers podcast.